If you are trying to tone up or get lean by this summer, you need to stop doing cardio. Instead, you should be focusing on building muscle and building strength, and let me explain why. Hi, and welcome to my YouTube. If you're new here, my name is Morgan Venn. I spent the last year, 2020, really recovering from orthorexia, which is an obsession with needing to eat healthy or eat clean and actually made me spiral into a very restrictive eating disorder. But now I've recovered and I promote content around a healthy, maintainable lifestyle that won't make you spiral into an eating disorder, but instead give you honest tips that honestly have worked for me. So. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you the specific exercises that have helped me gain muscle and get leaner at home during quarantine. All these exercises are something you can do in the comfort of your own home, and the only equipment I used was a set of 10 pound dumbbells. But also, it's totally okay to not have any weight at all, especially if you're new to your fitness journey, because it will help teach you proper form and you won't injure yourself in the future. Side note, I'm not a professional athlete. I haven't been on my fitness journey for five plus years, but I think that's kind of the appeal because I'm fairly new to this and I'm on this fitness journey with you. So I'm gonna give you honest and real tips that have worked for me. I'd also like to think that we are on this journey together. So I would love to hear about your guys' experiences. Comment down below and let's start a chat because why not? Before we go into the specific exercises, I want to go over the process and the fundamentals of gaining muscle and losing fat, which is essentially what getting lean means. I also want to disclose that you do not have to be lean in order to be happy. I actually believe that for myself, my entire journey was focused on gaining strength. And I think losing body fat was just a side effect of that goal. The only way to get lean is to gain muscle and lose fat. And the only way you can ever lose fat is by being in a caloric deficit. But wait a second, wait a second, because being in a caloric deficit does not mean starving yourself. There's so much I could go into and there's a video I watched that was great at explaining this. I'll link it down below. But it talked about how if you restrict your calories too much, you might lose weight, but you'll end up losing muscle. And in fact, your body fat percentage could actually increase, which is not the actual goal if you want a maintainable appearance of weight loss or looking lean. But in order to lose fat and gain muscle, you must have a very slight caloric deficit, but you also need to be eating adequate protein and enough nutrients in order to fuel your body. So my first thing is, one, you need to be in a very slight caloric deficit, but two, you need to have enough protein and you need to make sure you're eating enough. If you're feeling hungry at the end of the day, you might be restricting yourself too much. Also, if you are recovering from an eating disorder, you should not be focusing on the number of calories you're eating or anything. You need to be focusing more on your relationship with food, your relationship with your body. And for me, I focused more on gaining strength, which is what I want to go into next. Point three, if you're going to be trying to lose fat, but also maintain or even gain muscle, you need to be doing exercises that encourage muscle growth. The perfect example for this is you need to be doing progressive overload. Progressive overload can be broken down into three things. First, increasing the number of reps. Second, the weight. And third, the time under tension. And the last point is about cardio. And I'm not saying cardio is bad by any means. What I'm saying is you should focus more on muscle growth because burning calories should not be on the forefront of your mind. Yes, you should still do cardio for your cardiovascular health, but don't make it your priority. Instead, I actually recommend doing one to three sessions of cardio a week. Personally, what I do is I walk every day and I try to incorporate a HIIT session into my workouts about once or twice a week, maybe three times, but I haven't been doing that recently.
selfish, you selfish. Why you really mad? Cause I got the two seats. And it's me, myself, and I, and it's too many people down. I just saw the movie like it's belly ache. I'm too busy eating, got a belly ache. Ooh, I just want my cheese kind of straight away. Maybe we can celebrate. I just hit 11 straight. Hey, I'm a body man, so I might just go to God. I'm a life popper, so I might just show my body. Tell me what you learn from a nigga, what you earn from a nigga. I just grow baby blossom. Now on to progressive overload. You want to gradually increase the stress on your muscles as your body gets stronger. The first way you can do this is by increasing the number of reps that you perform. For example, the first time you do a routine, you could do 8 to 10 reps of a specific exercise. Then the next week, you could aim for 10 to 12, then 12 to 15, and so on. The next point of practicing progressive overload is increasing the weight. So you could start off with no weight and then the next week adding on 5 pounds, 8 pounds, 10 pounds, and so on. You should really be mixing up the way in which you practice progressive overload because not every week will you need to increase weight. Instead, you can also practice by increasing the number of reps, holding for longer, which is the next point I will talk about, time under tension. Before I get to time under tension, here are some glute exercises that I love doing on the floor. This is a variation of the hip thrust where your knees are further spread apart, almost like a butterfly. And then I tend to do a little bit of chest presses in between to give my legs some rest. And you can even add a combination of your arms and your legs working together. Here are some other hip thrust variations where you focus more on one leg and really try to strengthen that one leg. Now for time under tension. There's three amazing ways you can practice this and the first way is by keeping a tempo. For example, going down on a count of three. Up and slowly one, two, three, up. In fact, you should spend more time on the eccentric portion of the movement, which is when you are lowering down in the lift. This causes more damage to the muscle and encourages more muscle growth. The next thing you can do is to hold a position in time under tension. You hold as long as you can until your muscles want to give up. You can also do little jumps at the end to really burn that muscle. Here is a type of hold that I actually learned doing yoga. It looks simple, but trust me, it burns after a while. You're basically in a crouched position with focus on your glutes. You can also use this pose either with your feet together or your feet spaced apart. And you can add some compound movements as well if you want an upper body and lower body burn at the same time. This is another pose I learned in yoga. While it looks a little crazy, trust me, it really burns. And you can even try kicking your back leg up and squeezing your glutes at the top. Always make sure that whenever you're doing an exercise to even out on the other side as well. The last part of time under tension is drop sets. Drop sets are when you finish your normal reps with your heavier weight and then you drop down in weight and continue cranking out a few more reps in order to further burn that muscle. Here are some ab exercises that I really enjoy doing. You can do these with or without weight, but I really recommend trying to incorporate weight into your routine. Switching up your attitude, making love till you take it back. These ab exercises might seem simple, like these flutter kicks, but trust me, they are really effective. Just remember to keep your lower back against the ground and your core tight whenever you're doing any ab exercise. finish up, I'm going to give you a quick look into what my favorite hit exercise looks like. 
So hit is always 30 seconds on and 30 seconds off. And when you're 30 seconds on, you're going as hard or as fast as you can. Then 30 seconds off means total rest. Here are just some of my go-to exercises for HIT, such as high knees, pulse squat and jumps, butt kickers. But I would love to make a HIT exercise for you guys to follow if you are interested. So let me know in the comments below if I should make a follow along workout video. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. If you have any questions or any thoughts, please comment them down below. I really wanna start some discussions with you guys. So if you ever wanna get in contact with me, you can comment on my videos or you can DM me on Instagram. I am trying to be better at responding to people. So I will check my DMs about once or twice a week. But yes, thank you so much for watching. And I really appreciate you just being here and supporting me on my journey as well. I'd love to support you, so yay. Yeah, it's just your